the stuff I play on my show, which goes out on a Wednesday at 10 p.m., alternate weeks, um, it basically it covers you know the standard metal you've got the sort of folk influences you've got classical influences you've got you know there's even bits of jazz in it um there's there's everything in there that that's what appeals to me with the whole euro metal scene rather than the sort of <laughs> the stuff that you hear a lot on the sort of you know dare i say on the sky channels and things like that it's so what, what, why is it called euro metal how is that different to North American metal, if it is. I don't know. I think it's just been labelled with that because it's just bands from Europe, isn't it? So hence why I call my show the Euro Metal Express show. Just came up with it, the uh, the name one day in a pub. Just when when I started the show, I was like, "What am I going to call it?" And it just come. I went, "Oh, Euro Metal Express show," because it's like. So does anybody else use the term Euro Metal? Yeah, there yeah, people use it. Yeah, it's it's a term. It's a term that um that's used for. Uh, the style of music that that it is. I mean, Euro metal. People are thinking, who are Euro metal? I mean, there are bands way back that people remember, like the Scorpions. They are Euro metal. They're, f- they're they're one of the very first bands to ever break through. I know when I was growing up, there were bands like Halloween and Accept and bands like that. That, but now it, there's been a huge explosion in the last ten years. Uh, like Nightwish being one and bands like Sonata Arctica and Hammerfall and I know people are into Dimmy Bourgeois if that's how you pronounce it I don't know I'm not very good at it that was the fun when I was doing my show last night I had great problems pronouncing some of the uh, titles and some of the the, the, the the names of the bands well not the names of the bands but some of the uh, the uh, the so, members so how, how do you find the music are you getting music from all over Europe then yeah yeah I mean I I'm linked up with a lot of record labels now and then, you know, they send me all their stuff. Uh, some of it I get in the post and then some of it I have to download, which is a pain, but never mind. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, so I sort of go, go from that, the, the sort of downloading aspect, YouTube connections and all that sort of thing, you, you, you don't have to go to that? No, no, because everything, I, I mean, I buy a lot of CDs anyway, um, and if I get it sent in um, via a, a digital link, then I tend to go out and buy the album afterwards anyway, because I'm sort of a bit traditional. Like I like the real McCoy, like the packaging and everything, <laughs> and so it, it doesn't matter to me whether they send it. They, I still buy it, you know. And it's a good way of getting into new bands, new artists, because I've just done that recently with a band from Russia. I was sent uh, a copy of their latest EP and I was like, never heard of them. And I played it, I thought, yeah. So I went out and bought two of the albums. So, it does, you know. And then I do a lot of interviews as well. So the, the interviews, how, how do you do those? Do you do those over the phone? Uh, the first one I ever did, yes. Uh, I did it here, here actually, in the building. Um, I did it, I interviewed Gus G, and for people that don't know who he is, well, he's he's in a Greek band called Firewind, but I think he, he's quite famous now for uh, being uh, Ozzy Osbourne's lead guitarist. Right. Yeah, he took over from the, uh, I think it was Zach Wilde that, that left, and and he's uh, now the uh, the guitarist. And I got uh, an email from their record company saying, uh, do you want to do a phone interview with Gus G? And I'm like, that was my very first interview and I was like whoa that's the level I've set myself now is it but everything else I've gone to the venues or I've met them outside Uh, I've done a couple uh, just recently well a little while ago actually I did one in London where I just met the band in a pub Um, I've I've gone all around the country but presumably you know in other parts of Europe you've got to rely on the phone or or you're not going to get the interviews with the coverage, are you? Well, they come over here. I oh, mean, okay. that's it. I mean, the, recently I've just done one in Birmingham. A Norwegian band came over, and I went up to Birmingham and, and, and interviewed them there. But um, that's a thought, isn't it? I mean, I'm off to Finland next week, so uh, that would be good. I, I'd love to do that, interview them in their own countries. But uh, they do come over here. And there is that opportunity to do phoners, but... Um, I tend to say to record companies, look, I prefer to go and meet them face to face, because phoning is is, is not the same. Because you get the eye contact and you see their reaction. 
when you ask questions as well, which so is which, really which, good. So which cities are significant for this sort of music? Uh, well, in, in this country or well, no, around in Europe, Europe? In Europe. I think Scandinavia is a, is a huge uh, area for, for this st- type of music. Uh, Finland, um, Sweden, Norway, not so much Denmark, Germany. I think the Eastern Bloc now is playing a lot of this uh, style of music, like... Uh, is it still the Eastern Bloc? But the Eastern part of Europe, like <laughs> Ru- Russia and Hungary and Poland, I think there are... Uh, there's a big influence of this style, style of music going out there on the radios and, 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 and gigs in general. But uh, it really has exploded. I think YouTube is, it, it has caused a lot of this explosion as well. Yeah, because the people can find out more about it. Definitely. You can, I mean, you can go onto YouTube now and you can just type in a country and, and it doesn't matter what genre of music you like. You can just go uh, Greek blah blah style of music and up will come a list of bands or artists of, of-